If you see somebody on the streets, always give to the poor. The Bible says he who gives to the poor lends to the Lord. And you know, the best person to lend to is the Lord because he pays back with interest. So if you see somebody, and, and, and if they, you know, I, I don't, don't, well, I'm not going to give them because they'll buy something wrong with it. No, just, just bless somebody. Amen? I find it always a brief privilege to bless somebody. I one time gave a fellow some, some money on the streets here, and I came back a couple of days later. He said, hey, that gave me three days of warm food. Thanks. You know, and I just thought, my goodness. We are so blessed to go in our homes and have food to eat when there's people out right around us that don't always have that. So let's remember to love people and bless them. Amen? Are you all good? Tonight I want to talk to you that it lives in your bones, it lives in you, and it, you're clothed with this grace to bless you see, we've been talking, as you can see behind me, about crossing over. And the Lord wants us to cross over in a place of blessings that is beyond what we could dare ask, hope, or pray for. I believe God has greater blessings, don't you? I believe God wants to bring us into it. He wants to bring you into greater blessings. And the way that he brings you into something is he works it. In you. I know sometimes we say, Lord, just give it to me and I'll be happy. And the Lord says, no, you'll be much more happy if it lives in you. And then when I bring you into it, you can live in it. Because we've all sometimes been blessed with things and spoiled it. We haven't been able to stay in it. Our character wasn't, wasn't ready for the kind of increase. So we had to go back to school again, so to speak. And God would like to mature us to the place that what he gives us, it's life. It's how we live every day. He's brought us into it. This is how we live every day. Because what's in us is able to maintain what's outside of us. And Jesus talked about this quite a bit without maybe us always realizing it. If you open your Bibles in Luke chapter 6, Luke chapter 6, Jesus, verse 20 says, Then he lifted his eyes towards his disciples, and he said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you and cast your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake, rejoice in that day, leap for joy, for indeed your reward is great in heaven, for in like manner their fathers did to the prophets. Then he says in verse 27, I say to you who hear, who, you who are listening to me, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who spitefully use you. Are you listening? And to him who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other. And for him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from him who takes away your goods, don't ask him back. Just as you want men to do to you, you do also to them likewise. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners and receive as much back. Love your enemies, he says again. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. 
and your reward will be great, and you will be called sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. Therefore, be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Let me read that to you from the New English translation. Do not judge others, and God will not judge you. Do not condemn others, and God will not condemn you. Forgive others, and God will forgive you. Give to others, and God will give to you. Indeed, you will receive a full measure, a generous helping, poured into your hands, all that you can hold. The measure you use for others is the one that God uses for you. So do you see how God wants to bless us? He wants us to be blessed. Even when we're confronted by hate, even when we're confront, confronted by rejection, even when we're confronted by animosity, even when we've been good to others and then they're not good to us, or we have lent to somebody in good faith and then they forget about it. Come on. I have seen people walk in the blessings of the Lord and then the Lord gave them some money and then they lent it to somebody else and they didn't get it back and they lost the blessing of God. Don't ever let money be your master. It's a horrible master to have. It's a wonderful servant, but it's a cruel master. And Jesus said, you cannot have money as your master and Christ as your master. You have to choose whom you will serve. And money is never to be our master. And if somebody has maybe taken money from you in a way that's not totally right, bless them with it in your heart. And say, Father, I ask you to bless them. And Father, I thank you that, that you will help them. And God will bring it back to you. He'll bring it back to you because God is very faithful to those who are good to others in his name, to those who love others in his name. God said to, to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, Abraham, I will bless you and I will make you a blessing. In other words, you will become a channel of my blessings and all the nations of the earth will be blessed in you. <laughs> I mean, just think about it if God would say that to you. How many nations are there on the earth? And God would use you to bless them all? We think too small sometimes in what God wants to do through our lives. How is this ever going to happen, Pastor? I don't know anybody anywhere else. I, you know, folks, it starts right here. You could, you could just be walking down the street and meet somebody I mean, think about it. I was at the Indian embassy some years ago getting my, my visa to go to India to preach there. And, uh, and I'd been talking to the man at the door because I'd been waiting there from six in the morning. And, and we became good friends, the man who was guarding the door. And anyway, I got my visa and then I was on my way to, to get to Heathrow in time to catch my flight at 3.15 that afternoon to fly to Delhi. And as I'm walking to try to find a taxi, because I was late, I thought I'll never make it to try to find my way through the tube system. So anyway, then all of a sudden I felt the Lord pull on my spirit. So I stopped and thinking, what do you need, Lord? And I saw this man in this big blue coat on. And I felt the same pulling in my heart. So I walked up to him and I said, you're a son of God. He says, hallelujah, praise the Lord. He was an American son of God, you know. <laughs> And, and he, we hugged each other. I'd never met this man before. His name is Arthur Roderick. I'd heard of him before. He's the head of uh, ACE schools in this nation. And I, and I said to Arthur, wow, Arthur, what are you doing here? He said, well, I need a visa, an Indian visa, but they won't give me any. To make the story short, because of the friendship at the door, I was able to get back in with him even though it was closed, and God gave him a visa. And here I was able to bless India. You understand what I'm saying? I'm giving this as a testimony, not to boast to myself. But friends, the Lord would want to bring blessings through your lives in a way that you couldn't even fathom. And God is able to do this. God is able to do far more than we could dare ask or hope. But the point that I want to make to you today, let it live inside of you. 
And I can guarantee you that God is trying to teach you. He's trying to teach you. I want to read you just two little scriptures, one in Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans 12 is a powerful chapter in the Bible. And if you want some good reading, chapter 12 will do it. And in verse um, 14, and I'm reading from the Classic Amplified, it says, Bless those who persecute you. Right? So this is where you're practicing. Right? Somebody is not being nice to you. Somebody is really pushing you. Right? How is one of the ways that you can bless those? Well, the next point tells us. Bless those who persecute you, who are cruel in their attitude towards you. Bless and do not curse them. The way that you learn how to get blessings to live inside of you is you have to practice blessing and not practice cursing, speaking bad about somebody, right? So let's say it really hurt you what they said and what they, how they treated you cruelly. It really hurt you and it's pushing on you. It's hurting you. It's kind of hammering you a bit inside, yes? And you come home or you come in your workplace or you meet somebody and somebody looks at you and says, are you okay? And you say, you know, I'm really well. Thank you for asking, right? And you guard your heart. You guard your heart. And you do not allow evil to proceed through it. Evil came knocking, but you gave it no power. You gave it no excess. Evil is pushing on you. It's trying to come through you, but you stop it. And you will not let evil come through you. You will not let it employ you. You will not let it use you. You don't pass it on. So it doesn't find a home in you. And you resist it, resist it until it falls off of you, until you don't ever think about it again. And you just never mention it. You take it to your grave, just like Jesus took our sins to the cross. So you take it to the grave. You never, ever tell anybody. One person who had been a bit upset with me some years ago said to me, oh, well, Pastor Robert, all you ever do is brush things under the carpet. And I said, well, why don't you come and have a look under the carpet? Come on, walk into my house and see what my family thinks about you. Walk into Life Church and see what people think about you. There's nothing there. There's nothing under the carpet. Everybody be happy to see you because nobody knows anything against you. You see, friends, we have to practice blessings to get it into our system by, oh, by not allowing evil to come through us. And that takes the love of our Father because we often fail in this area, don't we? But it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7, Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are faithless under all circumstances. It endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out or becomes absolute, obsolete or comes to an end. And when we take love to our hearts, what helps me many times when evil is pushing on me, reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. I read the Bible. And sometimes I read it with an audible voice so my ears can hear me say it and I feel the anointing and the power of it. And praying for the ones from whom I have maybe suffered. And then I say, oh, Father, thank you for your grace on them. Thank you for blessing them. Thank you for helping them. Lord, give them peace, Lord. Comfort them. Because what you pray is what you become. And when you take to heart love and goodness and mercy to your heart through the scripture, one scripture that really helped me from the Living Bible was James chapter 3, verse 18. The wisdom that comes from above 
is the continual flow of God's goodness from your heart. And when you are good and don't boast about it, then you are truly wise. The wisdom that comes from above is the continual flow of God's goodness from your heart. And when you are good and don't boast about it, then you are truly wise. And the only reason I can say this to you like this is because I prayed it and prayed it and prayed it. You see, when you take the word of God into your heart and you begin to pray the word and pray, it begins to live inside of you and becomes a shield in you, a shield in you. And that shield keeps out the evil and allows the good to grow stronger in you and to grow more forceful and more powerful. Another scripture I'll give you that really has helped me is Proverbs chapter 14, verse 14, from the classic Amplified. In the second part of that verse, it says, A good man shall be satisfied with the fruit of his ways. Again, a good man shall be satisfied with the fruit of his ways, with the holy thoughts and actions which his heart prompts and in which he delights, with the holy thoughts and actions which his heart prompts and in which he delights. You see, Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, you will know a man or a person by the kind of fruit they bear. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good. Yes, God wants us to have this treasure. 2 Corinthians 6 tells us, or chapter 4 verse 6 says that, that we have this treasure of Christ's life in this earthen vessel so that the glory and the power thereof may be of God and not ourselves. God wants to help you cross over into a whole new place of blessings. And my charge to you this evening, let God by his spirit bring you into a new place of blessings. Let him bring you into a new place. Because sometimes, folks, we are a little bit stuck in certain areas. How do I mean stuck? The way we react to certain kind of pricks in life, certain kind of ways we get talked to or responded to, what comes out of us is not good. And then we stumble again. And our conscious then struggles and our heart is tempted to become hard and defend itself and excuse itself. And we have to struggle. And the Holy Spirit is having to work overtime to just hold us and hold us so that we don't give in to that hardness and justify ourselves by condemning somebody else. And before you know it, we are so dark inside that we cannot see anymore. And I don't want to get to that place. Jesus delivered me out of the control and the power of darkness and brought me into the light of his life. I don't ever want to go back to the darkness. And he who hates is yet in darkness, the scripture says in 1 John. I don't want no darkness in me. I don't want to be able to make excuses for my attitudes and my behaviors because somebody else. No, that's not blessing. Let's go back to Luke chapter 6. Go back to Luke chapter 6. He said, blessed are the poor, theirs is the king. Blessed those that hunger. Blessed those who weep. Blessed are those, uh, blessed are you when men hate you and exclude you and revile you. Revile means what? Disdain. Treat you like you're just nobody, nothing. Make you feel small. Yes? Revile you. And cast your name out as evil. Blessed. I want to stay in the blessing when these things come in my life. I want to live in a place that I cannot be robbed from the blessing because life can be tough and life can have its bumps and it can sometimes come from the person right next to you or somebody you love dearly because if, if the enemy could ever provoke somebody to hurt you, he will always try the one closest to you who has the greatest access. And we've got to live in such a way that we can turn the other cheek to the person right next to us. Come on now. We need to 
not allow the enemy to take us out of the blessing. Let the Holy Spirit bring you into a whole new place of blessings where no matter what you're going through, no matter what's going around in your life, you stay in that grace of God's favor, of God's goodness, of God's blessings, of God's gifts, and you're able to keep going even when all hell is going on around you, and you're able to stay the blessing in the midst of the storm. <laughs> Can I hear an amen? amen? Now, a good man, he says here, a good man shall be satisfied with the fruit of his ways. I tell you, one of the greatest traps that we can have sometimes that we become unaware of is that we get bored. We get tired, we get bored, we feel we got nothing to do, we're not being entertained, we're not living off of the blessings we get from others. And that always, listen, is to your advantage. Always. Why? Why is it to your advantage if the people around you are not giving you that feeling of blessing, that feeling of joy, that feeling of, of kindness and friendship. Why is that always to your advantage? Because it always exposes where you're living from. Are you living out of the rich treasury that comes up from within, like Jesus said, out of your heart will flow rivers of living water? And sometimes, folks, we can become spiritually so lazy that we're not blessed unless somebody blesses us. And we're a dark cloud if other people's sun is not shining. And we don't realize it, that we are living off of everybody else's spirituality. And the Lord is concerned about that because he wants and insists on it that your relationship is with him personally and that it is sufficient, that his grace is sufficient for you, that your satisfaction is in your communion with him. He insists on it because his name is called Jealous. He wants you to be satisfied through the goodness you receive from your communion with him. And you could be sitting all by yourself. And honestly, I have this quite often. Quite often, I'm by myself because Virginia is so busy and everything else is going on. My sons are married. They have their own families. And I sit by myself and I tell you the truth. I used to, in years past, be able to sit and watch things on the television and find some kind of sense of satisfaction but it don't satisfy me anymore. It don't satisfy me anymore. Why? Because it has no spirit life in it. I've become hungry for the life of the Son of God. And I remember last night I was sitting there for a minute by myself after I came home from a meeting or something, and I was sitting there, and I just began to just rock a bit like I do when I pray. <laughs> I began to rock a bit, and the Holy Spirit came all over me. And I was so satisfied, so happy, and so grateful. And the Lord wants you to be satisfied from the goodness you have with him. And I'm only, I keep talking about the same objective here, that the blessing lives in your bones. It clothes you. It lives in you. I'm going to read it in a minute here. Listen, a good man shall be satisfied with the fruit of his ways, with holy thoughts and actions which his heart prompts and in which he delights. God wants this for every one of us, that we're in a whole new place of blessing. That what comes out of your heart, oh, Lord, Ooh, glory, glory. And you could sit there and you kind of go, I have to get up early, I've got to go to bed, because you're being so satisfied with the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 27, verse 13, David said, What would have become of me if I had not waited on the Lord to see his goodness while I'm still alive? Wait on the Lord. He will strengthen you. He will help you. Folks, we need to have that kind of place with God. We're in a new place of blessing. We're in a new place of blessing. And, and, and what this works in you, it heals you from insecurities. It heals you from the feeling of, oh, they don't like me, oh, they don't call me, oh, they don't this, and all of that goes away, and you're not vulnerable to the, to the behaviors of others because you're being satisfied from above. You live from above. You live out of the rich 
inexhaustible treasury of Christ's glory with the Father, and you're so satisfied, so happy, and so blessed, and you are a channel of God's blessings to others. And folks, you've got to live this way at home. You've got to live this way with the people right around you. You've got to live this way the Lord shows you with those who are cruel to you. You've got to be nice to them. The goodness has got to be greater than the evil. It says in Romans 12 there that overcome evil with good. We want to have that goodness of God. I tell you the truth. When we hear what I'm saying, the blessings will overtake you. The blessings will overtake you. Favor will overtake you. I say it to myself. When I feel a bit pushed or so and my attitude tries to go down and become a bit cloudy, I go, well, this doesn't invite blessings. This doesn't invite favor. And I pull myself back up by the grace of God. Come on, we need to stay a channel of God's blessings. Can I hear an amen? Okay, Psalm 109. Psalm 109, and we'll read from verse 16 of Psalm 109. It's a very powerful psalm of King David, and King David was a blessing. We're still being blessed by him, and I'll read to you. It says there, King David says, because, verse 16 of Psalm 109, because he did not remember to show mercy, but persecuted the poor and needy man, that he might even slay the broken in heart. As he loved cursing, so let it come to him. As he did not delight in blessing, so let it be far from him. Yes? Let me read that to you from the Classic Amplified, because the man did not earnestly remember to show mercy, but persecuted the poor and the needy man and the broken in heart, he was ready even to slay them. Yes, he loved cursing, and it came back upon him. He delighted not in blessing, and it was far from him. He clothed himself also with cursing, as with a garment. And it seeped into his inward life like water and like oil into his bones. Wow, that's strong language. I want my bones to be filled with the sap of God's spirit, like David said in Psalm 63. How are my bones, my, my motivation, my inclination, my inner, you know, place where I kind of automatically go back to is the Lord loves me. The Lord's with me. The Lord's for me. The Lord never leaves me. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. It just lives in my bones so I could be pressed and pushed with anything and everything. But from within, it just springs up like a fountain, the spirit of his life. It lives in my bones. It lives in my inner being. It saps into me like water and like oil, the blessing, not the curse. It just isn't there. And this is very real what I'm talking about. Folks, God wants us to be in such a place of his grace that if you got pushed to the uttermost, it's like they scale back any defenses that you have on the outside and all that is left is what you live on the inside. And this goodness begins to all of a sudden just come up from within you and make you real soft and real gentle and real gracious and real kind. This is the Lord Christ living in us, where he teaches us to partake of his suffering, as Paul says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 10, and where we are conformed into his likeness and we become like him because he came to bless the ungodly with his mercy and with the Father's love. And God wants us to live in us, that we love to bless. <laughs> we love to bless. It just isn't even in you to want to get even. It isn't in you to want to 
retribute somebody, pay them back. No, you say, Father, don't charge them, Father. You've been so good to me, so merciful to me. Be merciful to them too as you've been to me, Lord. Help them through, Lord. And you pray for the person from whom you've suffered loss. And God wants that to live in you so strong that nothing can push you out of the blessing, that you live in the blessing. God wants to bring us into a new place. I cannot say to you that I am wholly made perfect in it, but I'm a long way from where I used to be because I keep on pressing on to take a hold of that for which my Savior took a hold of me. I've got one more scripture for you. I love this scripture. And I pray this often, and perhaps not often enough. It's in Colossians. Colossians. Oh, my, I just saw another verse I love too. It's it's hard for me to pass that by, but I'll go to Colossians chapter 3. David talked there in Psalm 109 about that cursing clothed them. It lived in their bones. And that's why it kept coming to them. And that's why the blessing was far from them, he says. But we live the other way, don't we? Blessings live in us. And that's what lives in us, what lives in our bones, what lives in our innermost being. And that's why it keeps coming to us. The blessing keeps coming. We live in it every day. The blessing of the Lord, amen? But we want to be clothed with it. Clothed means you embody it. It it has your culture of personality. It uh, It has your attitude. It has your reactions, your behavior. It has your smell. Yes, your clothes. Your clothing affects your smell. It affects what people see when they look at you. Yes. And he says here in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, Clothe yourselves, therefore, as God's own chosen ones. Clothe yourselves as God's own chosen ones, his own picked representatives, who are purified and holy and well-beloved by God himself, by putting on a behavior marked by tender-hearted pity and mercy, kind feeling, right? Tender-hearted, tender-hearted pity, say it. Tender-hearted pity, yes? And kind feeling, say it. Kind feeling, yes? Tender-hearted pity, mercy kind feeling, right? We want to clothe ourselves, tender-hearted pity, sensitive to the needs of others, moved with kind compassion for them, lowly opinion of yourselves, gentle ways, and patience, which is tireless and long-suffering, and has the power to endure whatever comes with good temper. Be gentle, and forbearing with one another. And if one has a difference or a grievance or a complaint against another, readily pardoning each other, even as the Lord has freely forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Pardoning means clear the record. See, some people, they want them to apologize before they let go. No, pardoning means they don't have to apologize. You forgive freely. Come on, how do I have this? Out of your communion with the Father. This is the blessing that lives in your bones by which you're clothed. And this is the place God is wanting us to cross into and live in every day. And I tell you, blessings will be all around you constantly and they will find you. And cursing and evil stays far from you and it does not get near you. It can't overcome you. It can't control you. Your home, your life, your body, your relationships, favor overtakes you. Blessings. And the Lord says in Proverbs 16, verse 7, or Proverbs 6, verse 7, or 16, one of those Proverbs, it says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he will cause even his enemies, he, the Lord, will cause your enemies to be at peace with you. I have experienced it in my life many times. 
where there were people that for some other reason, I don't know, were upset with me and I just kept keeping a good heart towards them by the help of Jesus and keep clothing me with a good heart towards them and blessings and God went to work on my behalf and we have good friendships, good friendships. You know, that reminds me, I was young, I think I was about 17 or 18 and I was asked by my father to sit by the phone and he was in a meeting and, the, and this businessman called and needed to talk to him right away. So I disturbed him in his meeting and he said, don't, 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 don't disturb me right now, take this to Kobe. Kobe's a lady that's worked there for my father for, for 70 years, literally. And she's still there, good friend of mine today. And uh, so I, I called, but her phone was in use. So I ran up to her office on the first floor and I knocked on the door and opened it and I was gonna say to her, and she said, you might be the son of your father. And it pricked me. My goodness, whatever was on me, on her, came on me. Yes, whatever was pestering her, came on me. And I swung that door open and turned around, rah, 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 saying it soft enough that I could deny it, but loud enough hoping she could hear it. True. Folks, that is cursing. That's not good. Yes? And so I'm walking down the stairs to get back to the phone, and the Lord speaks to me on my way down the stairs. No, Robert, that wasn't me. So I went to the phone. I told the man I have to call him back. I went back up to the office. I knocked on the door. I opened the door to say, hey, I'm so sorry. And rah, 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 I got another year for it. And again, what was on her bit me. And I swung that door open and turned around and rah, 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 as I walked down the stairs. And this time as I'm walking down the stairs, I said, don't talk to me, Holy Spirit. Don't, 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 don't even try. <laughs> yes? And the Holy Spirit, he's really gracious, you know? And he just was quiet. He was quiet. Next morning, I got up to pray, and there's the Holy Spirit. And the moment I felt the presence of the Lord, I became aware that my behavior did not represent the blessing of the Lord. And I wept and wept and wept and wept. Folks, sometimes we really have to weep at the altar of God's mercy and grace if we want to get the wrong thoughts out of our heart. We really have to deal with it by the throne of grace. I went back. I really took a lot to have to go back and again. Woo! I went back and I knocked on the door. She said, come on in. I stood there. I said, it's okay if I come in. I said, Kobe, please forgive me. That was such terrible attitude yesterday. She began to cry. She said, oh, Robert, Robert. It was just all too much for me. I couldn't bear it anymore. Anybody would have gotten an earful if they would have gotten in. I was just so overcome with so much stress. I couldn't bear it anymore. And I'm so sorry. I laid it all upon you. But see, when she laid her burden upon me, I could not bear it. The blessing of the Lord is where you can bear the burdens of others. The blessing of the Lord is where you can bear the burdens of others. The Apostle Paul writes to the Galatian church and he says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And God wants to bring us into, he wants us to cross over into a place of blessings with him. Oh my goodness, I tell you friends that he will empower you to be a source of his blessings, to bear the burdens of others, that they feel relief, that they feel healed, that they feel helped and you will feel more blessed than you ever thought possible because Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Let the Lord take you into that. Let him take you into it that it lives in your bones. It lives in your being. You're clothed with it. And every situation that comes unexpectedly as a big surprise, just suddenly what lives in you is able to deal with it with grace and with goodness and with kindness and 
we become a channel of God's gracious blessings. Father, I thank you for tonight that your Holy Spirit is here to teach us to not just be hearers only, but to be doers by the Spirit that enables and empowers. Jesus, you overcame all evil. You demonstrated the Father's goodness to us in your suffering. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you grant us the privilege to become part of your sufferings and empower us to bear one another's burdens, to love, to bless, and that we love blessing, that it lives in us to love the bless, even as you blessed us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Will we seek it? You know what David said there in Psalm 109, verse 27? He says in one translation, he said, Lord, if you're blessing me, it's okay if they're cursing me because you're blessing me. You see, friends, we can live in this despite what our circumstances are. Honestly, it really works. I love you. Have a good night's sleep. And I look forward to see you on Sunday. It's going to really be amazing this coming Sunday. We're going to talk about the future now, this coming Sunday. Thanks for coming. Good night.